Welcome back to Something in the Wilderness, a song discussion podcast about each one of Andrew McMahon's songs. I just want to remind you, if you ever need a refresher on any song we're talking about here on the show, I always include a link to the song on YouTube in the show notes. This way you can click the link right in your podcast app and give the song a listen anytime. If you're keeping track, it's now been over three years since Andrew's released a full album. Officially, we're currently sitting at three years and two months, technically, since Upside Down Flowers. This is the longest period of time in a long time between his albums. He's been right at the three-year mark a couple of times. Can you remember the last time it's been more than three years between albums? Granted, we did get a book, a tour, and a great single this past year, so I'm not complaining, but I'm really anticipating the possibility of what he has in store for next summer. He has stated on more than one occasion recently that it's his goal to have an album to release when he goes on tour next summer. So I guess we'll see. I picked this next song for a couple of reasons, though, only one of them being that it was on the most recent album. I also think the lyrics are probably relevant to a lot of people as we think about love and loss these past two years. And then lastly, I was fortunate to get a Wilderness t-shirt on the rock boat with lyrics from this exact song on it. And I'm pretty sure the shirt was only ever sold on a rock boat, so whenever I look at this t-shirt, I think of this song. There are so many songs by artists that I love that I would just call album tracks. It's not a bad thing. It's just that they're not the hit single, they're not the standout ballad or the standout rocker on the album, but they fit into the album right where they are because the artists probably intended it that way. That's how I feel about this song I'm talking about today. It's maybe not a song that I seek out specifically usually, But when it's played within the context of the album or maybe in a certain environment with a certain mood or feeling, it can just be the right song at the right time. This episode will focus on This Wild Ride. The band is Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness. The song is track six on Upside Down Flowers, released on November 16th, 2018. I remember really appreciating and being excited about the fact that Andrew wrote almost every song on this album on his own, unlike the previous two Wilderness albums which is one reason this album has such a different sound than the last two, probably. Andrew sang the lead vocals and played the piano on this track, while producer Butch Walker played most of the other instruments and provided backing vocals. I just love imagining the two of them together, spending time recording this album, and I have to believe that it's a pretty intimate experience to make an album with just one other person, as opposed to a whole team like he did in the past. You can really hear the intimacy in a lot of these tracks. Now, they did bring additional musicians in on a few tracks, on this album, This Wild Ride being one of them. Roger Joseph Manning Jr. plays additional keyboards on the track. Now, Roger does go by his full name in his credits, so that he's not confused with a folk musician also named Roger Manning. Roger Joseph Manning Jr. has been the keyboardist in multiple bands over the years, and he has his own solo work as well. He's also recorded and played in Beck's backing band, as well as other artists such as Blink-182 and even Johnny Cash. According to Setlist FM, this wild ride has been played 40 times in concert. 38 of those times was with the full band within a year of the release of Upside Down Flowers. Not surprising. The last two times, though, were in 2020, during the live stream pandemic era. He played it on Instagram at the very beginning of the pandemic in March, and then he also played it at an outdoor socially distanced concert in Dana Point, California in September 2020. I'll link in the show notes to both of those performances because actually the Dana Point, California show was recorded and live streamed at the time, and somebody's since put it on YouTube. I can understand why this song won't be a regular in the set list over time, but I imagine it's probably going to be one of those songs that he'll pull out from time to time as something special when the mood strikes him or when he's feeling those particular lyrics at the time. So let's talk songwriting a little bit. During Andrew's Dana Point performance in September 2020, He told the audience that he has a few songs that reference boats, this being one of them, so he decided to play it for that reason. At least that's what he said. He also mentioned that it's his favorite song off of Upside Down Flowers, which I found pretty cool. He also said there that this song's a little outside his vocal range, so he'd need help with the high notes. And I guess I can see that, but in all performances I've checked out online, it doesn't seem like he struggles too much with the high notes. Andrew has stated that the lyrical content on Upside Down Flowers is his most personal overall out of all of his albums. And that fits right in with what he has said the song's about. He says it's about his grandmother dying. In fact, he played the song for her on the day she died. Ever since I learned that fact years ago, I can't hear the song any other way. It's nice that he wrote a song about his grandmother, 
I'm positive that everyone listening to the show has lost someone important to them in their life. And it's nice to have something to look back on and reflect on those memories you have with the person that was special to you. Recently, I went through a house cleaning phase in my basement. I have several tubs of childhood and teenage and even young adult memories. I decided to part ways with the majority of it recently. Anything that wasn't personal just had to go. All my old toys and papers and things that just didn't have any of my personal touch or didn't remind me of anybody specifically. So I did keep the letters and the things I wrote when I was young and other keepsakes that remind me of certain people, of course. But I came across this series of letters that my grandmother wrote me when I first moved out of state many years ago. And it was really nice to experience her voice again through these letters. And it helped me to feel her presence again. If I had the talent for writing music, I would definitely do it. But instead, I expressed myself through the written word. And that works for me. But all these memories we have from our lives, I think it's important to remember and reflect back on those people who are significant in our lives and carry on their legacy in some way if we can. Sharing their significance with others, sharing those keepsakes we have of them with others, and keeping their memories alive through their own voices. I love that Andrew was able to pay tribute to his own Nan, as he called her, by writing this song for her, and I do hope she was able to hear it before she passed on. In March of 2019, while touring through Minneapolis, Andrew had this to say about the writing of the song. I wrote it for her in the morning, because I knew she was going to pass, and I just wanted to give her something. That's one of my favorite songs on the album. I played it at her funeral. I have so much emotion wrapped up in this album. On a side note, I did find an article that referenced this song as one that's written about Cecilia oddly. And I say oddly because from everything I knew previous, it was about his grandmother. So I don't believe it really was written about Cecilia, according to everything else I've ever read and heard about this song. But you're welcome to try looking up that article and others that state that. But I do understand, based on the lyrics, why someone would think it's about his daughter. Then again, I suppose it could have originally been written about singing Cecilia to sleep, but then became perfectly applicable to singing his grandmother to sleep while she was dying. Sometimes songs take on new meanings for us. But separately, I found an interview with Andrew from several years ago when he first opened for Billy Joel. And I bring this up now because, as you may have heard, he's opening for Billy on at least two dates this summer. The last time he opened for Billy Joel, he was writing Upside Down Flowers. About that, he said, I think there was a sort of energy. I don't know the best way to explain it other than to say there was a reinvested energy in the catalog and what it meant to me at such a young age. I grew up, and he was like my songbook and my vibe as a kid and really the first true idol that I ever had as a songwriter. Getting to share a stage with him and watch him play those songs that I grew up on all sort of circled around that time that I sat down at the piano and I started working on this album. I think there was a part of me that brought all that back to the forefront of my musical thinking and my songwriting process. You hear more of his influence on this record than some of my others just because it became so relevant for me again. So based on that statement, hey, maybe we'll get some more Billy Joel-inspired tracks after this summer. That doesn't sound like a bad thing to me. But let's move on to the sound of the song. In learning so much about various songs over the years that have been recorded, Occasionally you hear these stories about background noises or non-musical intros or outros. Sometimes these sounds are just something that happened at the studio while they were recording and they decided to leave it in. But sometimes it's very intentional and related to the meaning of the song. Now it's entirely possible you have no idea what I'm referring to here because this one's kind of easy to miss. The sound effects weren't recorded very loud in relation to the music that surrounds it. But if you listen to the beginning of the track for this wild ride, you'll hear what sounds like a door opening then someone walking across the floor. I believe the sounds are meant to sound like someone's walking into a room and sitting down at the piano to play. From here, you have that soft piano introduction. Now, if you're a regular listener to this podcast, you've heard me say this before when I talked about the songs toward the end of People and Things. I admit there are moments on Upside Down Flowers when I feel similar to that one. I get a little tired of too many ballads all at once. But something I also said in that same episode is that it actually took listening to that particular track individually a few times to really appreciate it and allow it to be a song that stands on its own. And the same goes for this wild ride for me. I mentioned earlier that Andrew referred to this album, Upside Down Flowers, as an album that was inspired by his experience opening for Billy Joel. You may also know that Andrew's a huge Tom Petty fan. And this is another characteristic of the song that I think it has in common with the bonus tracks on People and Things. 
I actually think it has more Tom Petty influence than Billy Joel influence. But if I really dive in, I could actually pick out parts that could be argued both points. You know, some part Billy Joel, part Tom Petty. And I'm sure that others would argue that there's other influences coming through here as well. But Tom Petty is what I hear most. And speaking of influence, just like a lot of other songs on the album, I can hear Butch Walker's touch all over this track. And I love that. If you haven't listened to American Love Story by Butch Walker, his latest album, you should do that as soon as you get the chance. Because if you're listening to this podcast, then I know you're an Andrew McMahon fan. And I think Andrew fans would really appreciate the latest album from Butch Walker. Like Upside Down Flowers, it kind of harkens back to the classic rock artist of the 70s. And speaking of Butch, I know he does backing vocals on this track, as well as the guitar, the bass, and the drums. But this is definitely one of the moments on the album I can truly hear his backing vocals, and it makes a difference. But with the good comes the bad. The one thing that always irks me about the production of this song, and I've also mentioned this one on the podcast before, is the distortion or the filter on Andrew's vocals in this song. Now, Andrew's voice isn't perfect, I know it, but to me it's just right for the music he writes. So I'm not sure why Butch felt there needed to be some filter on the voice that made him sound like he was in a watery tunnel or something. Even though I love rock music, I like a good clean vocal track usually, and it's something I always notice in this song. I think it's the reason I was initially turned off from a few of these tracks in the middle of the album here. Going away from the vocals, if you're ever curious to hear this song without its lyrics, be sure to check out Andrew's Rocktail Hour video series. He made a short video and a cocktail for every single song on the album, and then he released it on YouTube to promote the album a few years back. I'll link that one in the show notes as well. The most interesting thing about this Wild Ride Rocktail Hour episode is that there's an instrumental version of the song in the video, and it made me realize how much this song belongs in the ending credits of a movie, with or without vocals. It wouldn't even have to be a sad ending to a movie either. It could be anything serious or reflective at the end. Because let's face it, this song's about life. Something very general that can be applied in a lot of different ways. And speaking of which, let's get on to the lyrics. So as I mentioned earlier, I now own a t-shirt that has the lyrics printed on it. You are the boat on the ocean that rocks you to sleep. Even though when Andrew wrote these lyrics... That certainly meant something completely different. It definitely made sense to print him on a t-shirt to sell on a cruise ship that he performed on. But what did he mean by this? It would make total sense that he's referring to his daughter Cecilia through the lyrics in the song, like I said earlier. Almost everything in the song could be related to how a father would feel while their child falls asleep. Wanting them to feel safe. Wondering what they're dreaming. Metaphors about boats and balloons. But regardless of what Andrew's original intent with the lyrics were, what it meant to him in the long term was about his grandmother. Andrew may have written some of these lyrics with his daughter in mind, but just like us listeners, maybe he interprets it differently nowadays, after the fact, due to his life experience. When his grandmother passed, there's no doubt that was an emotionally intense memory, and he could associate this song with her passing regardless. Or maybe, like he said, it was always meant for his grandmother. But it is easily relatable to us parents who have small children, and I get that. Therefore, it would be hard for someone like me not to relate to the lyrics of the song with how I feel about my child. But that's the beauty of song lyrics, you know? They're open to interpretation, and that interpretation can change based upon the listener and where they are in their life when they first heard the song, and even where they're at in their life when they hear the song today. But overall, I love these lyrics. I think they're really strong, and they're easy for just about anyone to connect with in some way. As I read the lyrics, think about someone in your life either someone you love and you have the pleasure to see every day and spend time with still, or think about someone you've lost. It's up to you. Sleep tight. I will come to your defense. Whatever road you're taking. Tonight, I know nothing's making sense, but I'll guard the room you wake in. See, this first verse could be about anyone you love or have loved. Then the pre-chorus. Close your eyes. Follow the sound of my voice, my voice. This is clearly someone who's very important to you. Someone you're comfortable enough sitting next to while they sleep. Maybe you're holding their hand. Maybe their head's lying on you while they rest. Then the chorus. Because I'm going to sing. You are the boat on the ocean that rocks you to sleep. You're the balloon on the ballast attached to the string. If you're in too deep or you climb too high on this wild this wild ride. Maybe this chorus is about the life they've lived, 
or maybe it's about the life you hope they have in front of them. Either way, it works. Then the second chorus. Sleep tight. There are dreams you have not dreamed, and doors to worlds unopened. Don't fight. Some questions aren't worth answering. Some hearts that break aren't broken. Again, you're preparing this person for either an unpredictable life coming up, or you're describing the unpredictable life that has now passed. Either way, it either was or it's going to be magical and fantastic. Someone just beginning or someone just ending. I feel pretty good about singing this to my daughters, or even singing this and thinking about my grandparents who have passed. Another song that these lyrics remind me of is a song I really love called The Drugs Don't Work by The Verve. So if you're the type of listener that likes to think of this song to reflect on someone who is passing away or has passed away, then this Verve song has very similar themes. It's about sitting in a loved one's bedside, knowing they won't be with you much longer, but trying your best to make them feel comfortable while they're passing, comforting them with beautiful memories, singing to them, telling them how much they mean to you. I love that sentiment. I think my favorite part of the song is the piano melody throughout. And I think that's why the instrumental version of the Rock Tale Hour episode just really jumped out at me. I wasn't as distracted by those lyrics that I love so much, and I could really follow the piano a little bit more. Well, once again, this is one of those Andrew songs that I think I appreciate more after I finish an episode. But I think a song like this needs to be listened to on its own, away from the rest of the album sometimes. That's not always my perspective. If you've been listening, you know I'm a full album guy. But this song kind of got lost in the middle of the album for me for a long time. I also love the fact that it gave me the drive to reflect back on my relationship with my own grandparents. I lost my first grandfather way back in 1995, and my most recent one just last year in 2020. And I have some great memories with all of them. I wasn't present for any of their deaths years ago, but with both of my grandmothers, I do remember being at a point where it was understood that every time I visited or talked to them, it could be our last time. One of my grandmothers lived to 101 years old, and I truly believe that when it was her time, she was ready. She had such a full life, and I'm grateful for that. My other grandmother, though, was taken way too soon by cancer. But I remember that conversation when she told me her doctor told her she didn't have very long. It was a strange feeling, but I am glad we got to have that honest conversation. I was able to tell them both that I loved them before they passed. It's a wild life, but it's a short one. So make sure you tell those around you how much you love them, because most times, we don't have the luxury of knowing how much longer we have with them. Thank you once again for listening to me go on about this music that I love so much. I hope you enjoy it as well. If you ever feel like discussing an Andrew song on the show with me, email somethinginthewilderness at gmail.com or DM me on Instagram. Guests on Something in the Wilderness don't need to come prepared, just show up ready to talk about that Andrew song that you love so much. Now close your eyes, follow the sound of my voice.